In 2005, 17-year-old Robin Rihanna Fenty broke onto the music scene with the release of the smash hit, Ponder Replay. Since then, the world has watched her grow into one of the world's most successful women. According to Forbes, Rihanna became the world's wealthiest female musician in 2019 due to her success with music and makeup. She became the first black woman in charge of a major luxury fashion house. Yet, despite being so successful and popular, Rihanna has managed to keep her private life private for the most part. Though many fans are aware of her story during her rise to fame, her life before that is not as well known. Perhaps that's because information about the hitmaker's childhood in Barbados is not freely available, or because Rihanna is protective of her family and secrets. Whatever the reason, there's an interesting story there. It's really important for me to expand, to build, to evolve, to do things bigger, better, try new aspects of creativity. Even if Rihanna makes her success look easy, it was anything but. She grew up in less than ideal conditions and faced more than her fair share of struggles. But it was mainly because of her complicated past that she became the person she is today. Robin Rihanna Fenty was born in St. Michael, Barbados on February 20th, 1988. She is the daughter of accountant Monica and warehouse supervisor Ronald Fenty. Her mother is an Afro-Guyanese, while her father is a Barbadian of African, Irish, English, and Scottish descent. Rihanna remembers growing up in Barbados as just a little island girl riding bikes, running around barefoot and flying kites in the cemetery. But her childhood home wasn't as free. Her father's drinking problems would lead to tense moments. Fridays would be scary because he would come home drunk, she told Rolling Stone in 2011. He'd get paid and half of it would go toward alcohol. He'd walk in the door and it was all eyes on him. The future pop star could feel the temperature in the house go up whenever domestic violence was around the corner. Previously stating, my parents had a very abusive relationship. My dad was the abuser. He hit her on numerous accounts. She added, I don't wanna say normal, but it wasn't a surprise when it happened. She never went to the hospital. Domestic violence is not something that people want anybody to know. Though her mother was the primary victim of her father's outbursts, Rihanna recalled the time when she was punished for wanting to stay at the beach 10 minutes longer. He slapped me so hard, she revealed to Rolling Stone. I ran home with his handprint on me. I couldn't believe it. My mother saw my face, how traumatized I was. You know how when you know you did something wrong and you deserve to get beat? This was out of nowhere. They divorced when Rihanna was 14. After his recovery, father and daughter grew close again, and Rihanna still refers to him as the coolest person on the planet. Her upbringing as the oldest child in the family made her staunchly independent, and her father helped mold her into the woman she would become. He taught me how to fish, how to swim, how to run, how to ride, the singer-songwriter told the media outlet. He really toughened me up. With Rihanna's father battling his demons and the fights at home increasing, the future celeb's mental health understandably suffered. Though the trouble at home was kept private, the young Rihanna began to separate herself from the other kids at school. She had always been a straight-A student, but she started to struggle. Rihanna's mother, Monica Braithwaite, said, she would suffer from these terrible headaches. 
She had to get CT scans. The headaches continued from age eight until Rihanna was 14, but the doctors had no answers for the severe migraine-like attacks. Initially, they believed that Rihanna may have a tumor of some sort, with the singer herself once saying, it was that intense. However, the test results always came back negative. It wasn't until her parents separated and the fighting stopped that the headaches finally disappeared. Rihanna believes that the pain was caused by the emotional stress of the arguing and domestic abuse. As a teenager, Rihanna turned to singing as a release from her troubles at home. She formed a girl group with two classmates. When they were 15 years old, they scored an audition with music producer Evan Rogers, who was visiting the island with his Barbadian wife. To the unfortunate detriment of her two friends, Rogers was awed by the precociously beautiful and talented Rihanna. The minute Rihanna walked into the room, it was like the other two girls didn't exist, he admitted. Over the next year, Rihanna traveled to Rogers' home in Connecticut to work on her demo album. With the help of songwriter Carl Sturkin, she made a four-song demo. In January 2005, Rogers landed Rihanna an audition for Def Jam Records and its newly minted president, the legendary rapper Jay-Z. I was in the lobby just shaking, she recalled. However, once Rihanna opened her voice to sing, she regained her composure. I remember staring into everybody's eyes in the room while I was singing. And at that point, I was fearless, she said. But the minute I stopped singing, I was like, oh my God, Jay-Z is sitting right in front of me. The hip hop icon was every bit as wild by Rihanna's commanding presence as Rogers had been two years earlier. And he signed her on the spot. It all started when they wanted to sign me in the beginning and they started going to the other companies. You know, we had a few meetings and all, all the rest of them, you know, they were so pushy and they just told me everything about the, the, the industry and their company. And I was really impressed by that. So I was like, this, this feels like home. And I love working with them. I love working with them. Only eight months later, in August 2005, she released her first single, Ponda Replay. Her first album, Music of the Sun, was released later that month, reached number 10 on the Billboard Albums chart, and featured the single, If It's Lovin' That You Want. The following year, Rihanna released her second album, A Girl Like Me, spawning two major hits, Unfaithful and S.O.S., Rihanna's first number one single. In early 2007, Rihanna began work on her third studio album. In an interview with MTV News, she announced that the new music is going in a different direction. You feel different every album, and at this stage, I feel like I want to do a lot of up-tempo songs. The same year, Rihanna dismissed her innocent image for an edgier look with a new hairstyle. Inspired by actress Charlize Theron's bob cut in the 2005 science fiction thriller, Ian Flux. Rihanna explained that she wanted to keep the audience dancing and be soulful at the same time. She sought to make an album that people would listen to without skipping tracks. In May 2007, Rihanna revealed that she called the album Good Girl Gone Bad because it represents her bolder and more independent image. The LP opens with the lead single, Umbrella, an R&B song performed with drums and thundercloud synths. The song received acclaim from music critics who praised its production, vocals, and the collaboration between Rihanna and Jay-Z.
Umbrella reached number one in more than 17 countries worldwide, including on the UK Singles Chart and the US Billboard Hot 100 Chart. By the end of the Umbrella video, she debuted no less than four stunning looks and an iconic new hairstyle that began to spread through every high school hallway. As she stomps her way through a choreographed dance in the rain, she similarly evokes and subverts Gene Kelly's infamous singing in the rain scene. Rihanna follows the likes of recording artists Mariah Carey, Janet Jackson, and Christina Aguilera when she sheds her innocent image for an edgier look and sound. Jay-Z also spoke about Umbrella and stated that the song represents artistic growth for Rihanna. If you listen to the lyrics to that song, you know the depth and how far she's come. The album spawned seven top 20 hits, with Take a Bow and Disturbia reaching number one. Rihanna was nominated for several 2008 Grammy Awards for Good Girl Gone Bad, winning Best Rap Sung Collaboration for Umbrella, alongside Jay-Z, her first Grammy Award. However, Rihanna's scheduled performance at the Grammys was canceled the following year. In February 2009, the world was rocked by reports that Chris Brown had abused his then-girlfriend, Rihanna. The assault happened on the way back from a party where Rihanna spotted the other woman. She then found a message from her on his phone, which led to them arguing in the car. For her part, Rihanna was disappointed because she made a promise to her younger self that she was never going to date somebody like her dad. She wasn't proud of her choice, but she had been overpowered by love. My selfish decision for love could result in, into some young girl getting killed. I could not, I could not be easy with that part. I couldn't be re held responsible for telling them, go back. Chris, even if Chris never hit me again, who's to say that their boyfriend won't? Who's to say that they won't kill these girls? And these are, these are young girls. And I could not, I just didn't realize how much of an impact I had on these girls' lives until that happened. Following their separation, he was convicted of assault. You've been through some, some times this year, some challenging times. I know you've been speaking out publicly recently and have just carried yourself so well. Thank what you. What is the message that you would like to get across to women? I just want women to just feel empowered and really make the right decisions for themselves and be happy. That's what I'm about. The album that followed later that year, Rated R, much of which she co-wrote, was marked by Isley Stark production. The album's lyrical content generally features bleak views on love and boastful lyrics concerning perseverance and overcoming adversity. Rated R is a declaration of independence from Brown and Rihanna taking charge of a narrative that had turned her into a victim. For the first time in her career, she zoned into the album as both an art form and a post-traumatic mode of cathartic self-expression. Rihanna is known for her style evolution. There is a reason why she is dubbed the influencer's influencer. The Barbadian singer has always recognized fashion as an extension of oneself, going by her own rule book and emerging as the trendsetter. 
For her hard-edged, rock-inspired rated R, Rihanna partially shaved her head and adopted a less traditional approach to dressing for red carpet events and in her music videos. Rated R was an era that tied together all of Rihanna's metier, her incomparable eye for fashion becoming a principal part of her vision, birthing the influencer of all influencers. Throwing prim and proper out the window, toying with androgyny and machismo, she invoked the transgressive sartorial freedom of monolithic icon Grace Jones. During her 2010 Last Girl on Earth tour, Rihanna wowed audiences not only with her set list, but with her fiery red hairdo. It signaled a shift both aesthetically and sonically for the 22-year-old singer. After unburdening herself of emotional and physical trauma on Rated R, Rihanna was in full pop mode cosplaying as Madonna for her performance at the MTV VMAs and embarking on a new era with her fifth studio album, Loud. Uh, the new album is really, really loud and expressive. Um, a lot of great songs. I just wanted to make an album that was full of amazing records from the beginning to the end. And I can't wait for the world to hear it because I feel really good about it. I'm really proud of it and I can't wait for everybody else to enjoy it. Two days before her stunning VMA moment, Rihanna dropped her first single for Loud, Only Girl in the World. Though her reputation as a force in dance pop stood five years strong, the up-tempo bass fueling Only Girl was an entirely new sound for the star. The pulsating beat of Only Girl illustrated EDM's dominant grip on the pop landscape, but Eurodance never sounded this good. While Loud features plenty of bangers, it also saw Rihanna continue to press the limits of R&B on the Drake-assisted single, What's My Name? The follow-up single was a callback to the dance hall sound Rihanna had perfected since her debut album, Music of the Sun. With both singles, Rihanna secured two more number one hits, but she was only just getting started. Loud pushed everyone's buttons. The Barbadian singer was never a wallflower, but her fifth studio album found a bolder, brasher, and more defiant Rihanna. Album opener s and caused a major stir as the chorus found Rihanna enticingly belting, sticks and stones may break my bones, but chains and whips excite me. Over a hook from the cures, let's go to bed. While broadcasters around the world embrace the bubblegum energy of only girl, many rejected and even banned the raunchiness of s &M. In the song's video, Rihanna mocked the press that pounced on her every move during the Rated R era, even leaving celebrity gossiper Perez Hilton bound and gagged. She later linked up with another tabloid queen, Britney Spears, for a remix that catapulted s and to the top of the Hot 100, making the song her 10th number one single. Loud reached number three on the Billboard 200, 
and earned three Grammy nominations, including Album of the Year. The album's dance-centric sound also made it a commercial smash outside the U.S., where it topped the charts in nearly every major territory. Marking Rihanna's return to the pop fold proved she could hold her own among the edm laced pop that dominated the charts at the start of a new decade. After her challenges with Chris Brown, Rihanna found she spiraled into a dark place. In Oprah's next chapter, she recalled that she was resentful, angry, and struggling to overcome it all. When asked how she finally got through it, Rihanna said, I repaired my relationship with dad. The singer had grown apart from her father after her parents' divorce years earlier. I was so angry at him, she explained, adding, I couldn't separate him as husband from him as father. After the reconciliation, however, Rihanna and Ronald Fenty continued butting heads. In some cases, it wasn't personal, it was business. According to CNN, Rihanna discovered that her father and his business partner, Moses Perkins, allegedly used her name and brand Fenty to earn money. The singer and her representatives asked the pair repeatedly to cease and desist all activity and efforts to exploit Rihanna's name and the goodwill associated with the Fenty brand. When that failed, they filed a lawsuit. According to the 2019 suit, Rihanna's father reportedly launched a production and talent company called Fenty Entertainment in 2017 and negotiated 15 unauthorized Rihanna shows in Latin America, two at the Staples Center and another at the T-Mobile Arena, all totaling nearly $15.5 million. He even reportedly attempted to use the Fenty brand to register a line of resort hotels. With the case set to move to a jury trial in June 2020, the Blast reports that it was later postponed due to the pandemic. Rihanna was exposed to things in life much earlier than most. She saw and experienced things as a child that most people never do. By the time the singer-songwriter was 16 years old, her father had moved out and her mother had returned to work to support the family. This left the young teenager at home to look after younger brother Rajad. Though it caused Rihanna to grow up quickly, she looks back at these times fondly, telling Elle that it was probably the best summer I ever had. But it was more than one summer that she would act as a caregiver. While Rihanna takes on much of this willingly, such as gifting her mother a massive mansion, some of it has been imposed upon her. In 2008, she was forced to send her father home from her U.S. tour for drunken behavior. To save her father from going to jail for a California arrest, Rihanna agreed to pay $58,000 for him to enter a Malibu rehab program in 2013. And while speaking with Rolling Stone, Rihanna revealed that her dad once sent her a text with nothing but prices for furniture he wanted to buy for his house. It's fine, she explained. I'll give my father anything. It's not something that's hard for me to help him with. It's just like, damn, dad. Hi. Rihanna bounced back in 2011 with her sixth studio album, Talk That Talk. The album combines a variety of musical genres such as hip hop, R&B, electro house, electro, dance hall, and dubstep a genre first incorporated on Rated R in 2009. The album differed from Loud and marked her return to her dance hall roots. The lead single, We Found Love, featured Calvin Harris and premiered on August 10, 2011, and quickly became Rihanna's 11th number one hit in the U.S., placing her in third place alongside Whitney Houston for the female artist with the most number one singles on the chart behind only Madonna and Mariah Carey.
the song remained atop the chart for 10 non-consecutive weeks, surpassing Umbrella as Rihanna's most successful run on the Hot 100 to date. The track also topped the charts in 26 additional countries. Early in her career, Rihanna made her interest in fashion clear in her desire to work in the clothing design industry. She said, fashion has always been my defense mechanism. In November 2011, Rihanna announced her first fashion venture with Armani. In February 2013, Rihanna presented her first women's fashion collection at London Fashion Week for British brand River Island, collaborating with her stylist, Adam Selman. They went on to publish three more collections for the brand. Rihanna then collaborated with numerous fashion houses, including Dior, Stance, and Manolo Blahnik. In March 2015, Rihanna was chosen as the new face of Dior, making her the first black woman to be the face of the brand. Rihanna played the recurring role of Marion Crane in the fifth and final season of Bates Motel. The show received universal acclaim from critics. Rihanna also had a major role in the Luke Besson film Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets, an adaptation of the comic book series Valerian and Lorelei, also starring Dane DeHaan and Cara Delevingne. The film was released by STX Entertainment on July 21, 2017, in the U.S. Rihanna was one of the all-female cast in the heist film Ocean's 8, directed by Gary Ross and released by Warner Brothers on June 8, 2018. The movie grossed 300 million worldwide and became a major box office success. Rihanna received her first invite to the Met Gala back in 2007, when the event was a slightly more low-key affair, and she rocked up in a white studded gown. She followed it up with a Chaplin-esque tux in 2009 and a lace dress in 2011, before stepping out in the look that blew all her previous efforts out the water. For 2012's Shia Pirelli and Prada Impossible Conversations theme, she wore a Mucha-designed crocodile leather look backless gown that transformed her into some kind of an ancient Grecian goddess and marked her as a permanent Met Gala one to watch. 250,000 Swarovski crystals, skin-colored panties, and a sliver of faux fur. That's all Rihanna wore to collect her Fashion Icon of the Year prize at the 2014 CFDAs. With a dress by Adam Selman, it was a look that felt like a gear change for the star. Sheer, nipple-freeing artisanal design that felt like a multi-layered statement to a pop world that tried to determine what women should and shouldn't get away with when it came to their wardrobe. Who could forget her excellent, do my tits bother you, comment? A year after Rihanna began working on her eighth studio album, the single Four or Five Seconds was released, which featured Rihanna paired up with Kanye West and Paul McCartney. Two other singles followed its release, Bitch Better Have My Money and American Oxygen. Neither made the final track listing for Rihanna's eighth studio album. With divergent sounds on each single, critics and fans didn't know what to expect from Anti. The unorthodox cover art was equally inscrutable, engulfed in a wash of red paint and picturing a young Rihanna holding a balloon and wearing an oversized crown that covers her eyes. The artwork also featured a poem in Braille entitled, If They Let Us, Part One, which clarifies the album's narrative arc. I sometimes fear that I am misunderstood. It is simply because what I want to say, what I need to say, won't be heard heard in a way I so rightfully deserve. During the album's recording, Rihanna aimed to create a record with soulful and aggressive sounds in the musical, lyrical, 
and vocal context. During a press conference in early 2014, Rihanna said that she aimed to depart from the musical style of her previous releases, which she described as big songs. Rihanna continued to state that with Auntie, she wanted to focus on music that felt real and soulful and would be timeless. She also stated years later, not any songs that were burnt out. I find that when I get on stage now, I don't want to perform a lot of my songs. They don't feel like me. Auntie abandons the radio-friendly dance pop production of Rihanna's previous hit singles. It's a genre-spanning record consisting of pop and dance hall tunes with elements of soul music. Auntie is seen as Rihanna's magnum opus, featuring on numerous publications' best albums of the decade list. The lead single, Work, featured Drake, with whom she famously had an on and off relationship between 2009 and 2016. You could pick the time and the place you spent some time away. Now you need to forward and give me all the work, 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 work. me up there, work, 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 work. You see me down my dad, 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 dad. So me better, work, 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 work. When you walk out, la, 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 la. When the cat from my dad, 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 dad. Work was not the first song the artists worked together on over the years. Take Care and What's My Name both charted in the top 10. Rumors continuously circulated about the pair, and in 2016, Drake introduced her at the VMA saying, we love the videos, which changed their artistic vision from year to year. But most of all, we love the woman who hasn't changed since day one. She's someone I've been in love with since I was 22 years old. She's one of my best friends in the world. All my adult life, I've looked up to her even though she's younger than me. She's a living, breathing legend in our industry, he said. But the pair seemed to have fallen out when Rihanna told in an interview in 2018 that they were no longer friends. She said, we don't have a friendship now, but we're not enemies either. It is what it is. Rihanna and Saudi businessman Hassan Jamil dated for almost three years after her split from Drake. The pair started dating in January 2017, and their relationship went public after pictures of them kissing in Spain went viral. While the couple themselves have always been tight-lipped about their romance, Rihanna talked about him in an interview. I'm actually in an exclusive relationship for quite some time, and it's going really well, so I'm happy. However, in 2019, Rihanna was spotted numerous times with rapper ASAP Rocky. Back in 2013, when filming the music video for their collaboration, Fashion Killer, there were reports that Rihanna and Rocky were spotted kissing off screen. Fast forward seven years, and in December 2020, the first reports of the couple officially dating hit the press. A source told U.S. Weekly that Rocky has been very into Rihanna for years, and he was always the instigator in their flirtatious connection. At first, Rihanna would brush off his advances and kept him in the friend zone. But things changed over the summer, and they finally hooked up. They've been together ever since. That Christmas they spent together, and then in May 2021, Rocky gives an interview to GQ and gushes about Rihanna calling her the love of my life and my lady. He also says dating generally feels so much better when you got the one. In September that year, the couple made their Met Gala debut in fashion blankets. Many fans speculated that this garment was to cover the fact that Rihanna was pregnant. And they were right. In January 2022, the news broke that Rihanna was pregnant. The couple welcomed their son on May 13. The launch of Fenty Beauty in 2017 highlighted the importance of inclusive marketing, which jolted the industry and shifted the beauty landscape. It was the first time underrepresented, underserved women in cultures were featured in a global prestige beauty campaign. From the very beginning, 
founder Rihanna was very clear that absolutely no one was to be excluded. Her vision of beauty for all became the marketing mission. From my experience, I've always known about the void within the makeup industry for women of color, especially, uh, or women who are really pale, you know, and you just never know what you're gonna get with a brand. And I felt like it was, it's 2017, it's like, no woman should ever walk up to a makeup counter and not find their shade somewhere. And I'm, I just feel good that we've been able to bring this positive um, breakthrough to the, the industry. I didn't really even think that it would be this way because I just think, I, I thought more people would have filled this void by now, but now I'm understanding that people are getting a little bit even emotional at counters when they find their shade because it's the first time they've ever been able to find their makeup shade and that makes me, it makes me happy and it makes me sad at the same time that it's taken this long. In the brand's first month, Fenty Beauty recorded $72 million in earned media value, ahead of other high-profile brands, including Kylie Cosmetics, Benefit, Urban Decay, KKW Beauty, and NYX. Also in the brand's first month, Fenty Beauty-related content received 132 million views on YouTube. Since the launch of Savage X Fenty in 2018, Rihanna's self-created lingerie brand has gone from cult status to a worldwide game changer. Since its conception, Rihanna's mission statement has been evident and concise. I want people to wear Savage X Fenty and think, I'm a bad bitch. I want women to own their beauty. It's really important for me to expand, to build, to evolve to do things bigger, better, try new aspects of creativity, very important for me. I get bored really quickly, so if I've done it, I'm already bored of it while I'm doing it. That's something, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm always like, what's next, what's next? I want something better, I want something different. How do we, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be bigger, but maybe it's deeper. Maybe we just go deeper and, and explore things that aren't being discussed. You know, keeping the show fresh and unique is actually my only goal um, because it's it's kind of pointless if we're going to be redundant. The talent has a lot to do with it, um, from choreographers to the lighting to the DP to the directors. There's so many producers. There are so many dancers. There are performers. There's so many. T there's so much talent in this show that that's what actually makes it. It's, 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 it's the thing that evolves. It's the thing that changes and molds into this new creation every time. The future is bright for Rihanna. On September 25th, 2022, she announced that she would be headlining the Super Bowl halftime show. Set to mark her first live performance in over five years, her ninth studio album and tour are sure to follow. So the thing that makes me feel great is when I feel I feel healthy when I feel like my skin is going, my hair is thick, and I'm excited to do little things in life. Like, I appreciate every little thing. That makes me happy, but happiness kind of is the open door to, to 
everything. Like, you could do anything. You could be creative, you could be savage, you could be anti-social. You could just be whatever you want. As long as you're comfortable and you're happy being exactly in that space, I've grown to appreciate the little things and I've grown to love being still, which is something I haven't been used to since I was 16 years old. London. <laughs> Unapologetic. See you on the Diamonds World Tour. I love you. <laughs>